Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, we're gonna to talk about my top 10 hobo hacks. Stay tuned. A lot of the things that we teach on our channel when it comes to the hobo survival skills has a lot to do with the classic era of the hobo, right after the Civil War from the 1870s on through the 1930s, right before the Second World's War in the 1940s. But the hacks that I'm gonna show you today are things that you can still use now. They're very useful, and I think that you'll like them. For this first hack, you're going to need a small grater and some soap. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna grate the soap. You can see it there, just using this grater. This works extremely well, just a cheese grater. I like this style because it's really flat. Uh, it's stainless steel. You don't have to use a whole lot. Again, just a little bit of work. You can see what we've done there to the corner and a fair amount of soap down in the bottom of the can. This hack is extremely useful for people who don't have a lot of money, they can't afford liquid soap, and especially when it comes to washing up things, either dishes or your laundry. Next, we take our number 10 can, and this can be found in the back of restaurants, often be had just for the asking. You can also sometimes find a lid. They either came with the can, or you can find another can lid that will fit, and that's gonna be very important, and it's very useful. Next, we want to put some water in here. We don't want too much. A little less than a half a, of a can full would be good. Something like that. So we're about maybe a third. That'll work pretty well. And then we put it over a small fire to warm it up. Now, while that's heating up, we could take a stick and stir that around and get the soap thoroughly mixed into the water as it's warming up. And because we grated the soap, it's actually very easy to warm it up and it's easy to stir as well. The type of soap that I used is just an old fashioned lye soap. As soon as that's sufficiently warmed up, I'm gonna take it off the fire and carry it over to our workstation. And again, you can see about how much soapy water we have in there and you can just stir it up, but all of those little pieces are thoroughly melted. Next, we take some underwear, some socks, t-shirt, and we place them in there. And you wanna go ahead and kinda push it around like so, until they're thoroughly moistened. And you can put however much water in here you wish, depending on what you're doing. And we're gonna put the lid on, and that's why the lid's important, and we're gonna agitate it. Now do make sure that this is not too terribly hot if you're gonna do this, or use your handkerchief on this hand. But this will agitate and shake your clothes, like just like this, and uh, this will help to wash your clothes. Now you could put some stones in here, or you could put something else that you want to kind of help agitate it. Or if you didn't have a lid, you can always just use the stick. But you need a little bit more water for that. When you're done, you want to take your soapy things out and you want to wring them out thoroughly. The nice thing about lye soap is it's not bad for the environment. It's a very natural type product. All right, as you can see, there's very little soapy water left in here. We'll rinse that out and toss it. Now all we have to do is use some clean water. We'll put a little bit more in this time, more like a half, as you can see. And then we'll go ahead and put our stuff back in, in the water, push it in there good, and then repeat the process of rinsing. When you feel that you've thoroughly rinsed it, go ahead and pull the clothes back out and go ahead and squeeze all the water out that you can get out of it. Dump the rest of the gray water. And then with the remainder of the gallon, you do your final rinse. So we've got about a third left here. And again, the same thing. And 
And you can use your hands a little bit at this stage to help push the water through the material and the fabric. And then we shake. Now you can rinse as many times as you want, but this is pretty good because we didn't put a whole lot of soap in at the beginning. We minimize the amount of soap that we have to rinse out. And just like that, we're ready for some nice, dry, clean clothes in a couple of hours, especially with this breeze that's blowing. That'll help them dry out even faster. Of course, you could place them in the sunlight if you had a good place for it. We don't really right here, so this is gonna have to work. This next hack is very interesting, has a little bit of a twist to it. Most of you know that people that are out on the street and are struggling with things, they'll take newspaper and they'll crumple it up. So you take a sheet or two of newspaper, crumple like this, and you stuff it inside of your clothes to help you stay warm. And then of course you would stuff your whole upper layer with this, and that provides dead air space for insulation. But there's another trick that goes along with this that I just learned. And I got it from a fellow by the name of Hobo Road, that's what he goes by on his YouTube channel. And what he suggested, was using shopping bags for the exact same thing. Just wad them up, stick them inside your clothes. Again, these are given away when you shop in most places for free. And you can literally just stuff yourself full of these things. People will give them to you even if you ask for them. And what a great idea for a quick installation for that extra added weight. You could do this all over your body. And then of course, you would want to go ahead and button up your outfit as much as possible for that cold weather. It's a neat trick. Of course, the scientific principle behind stuffing a second layer with newspaper or shopping bags is that you're creating dead air space and the air has a much more potential to be trapped. The heat of your body, of course, trapped inside of that dead air pocket. Uh, many little pockets created by the folds and bends of that crumpled up uh, either newspaper or using the shopping bags. Of course, you can also do this with dry leaves and grasses, something that we teach in survival. For our next little hack, a lot of people don't realize, but you can open a can with a spoon if you don't have a can opener with you. And it's pretty simple. You just start by creasing the top of the can. Now do be careful, and you may want to wear gloves doing this. There we go. We're already through part way. Now you can just keep working your way around and keep scoring that. Just keep working your way through the can. And then as you get it open more, you can use the spoon to leverage it open. But what you're doing is you're creating a crease. Now you don't really want to work around the outside of the can. You want to be more toward the inside where it's a little softer and where you have a little bit more leverage. And we're just holding the spoon like this and just very carefully using that sharp tip, that edge of the spoon, And after you get that creased a little bit, it weakens the metal, and you can start using that spoon to pry up and start working your way around. I'll do that and get back with you. Once you get that sufficiently worked around, then you can take your spoon and you can simply pry back and then you can get out whatever's in there. This is an old can of sauerkraut, so that's why we're using it. It's actually far out of date but uh, I keep some of these around just for demonstrations. And uh, but anyway, that's how you open a can without a can opener. Now there's another way to open a can that doesn't require a spoon or a can opener or anything like that. What you need is some cement or asphalt or something, but cement has a little bit better surface, so you can use a sidewalk or you can use a curb perhaps, or a cement block if you can find one. Even a brick will work. And what it is, this lip here on top, this is kind of folded over in the factory. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna abrade this right here by simply rubbing it like this 
We're going to do that until it grinds away this outer lip. You can definitely tell we're making progress. I'll keep doing this and get back with you. Now you know you're getting close when you start seeing the fluid leaking out. And that's your sign just to keep scrubbing and keep working because you're getting really close. This is going to take a few minutes, but if you will keep doing that, you can abrade the entire edge. If you don't have a spoon, you can use a stick or anything like that, but something thin that you can get into the side and go ahead and work on prying that up. Just push down on one side, sometimes that works. Be careful, you don't want to cut yourself. But as you can see, all we did was just abraded the edge all the way around. Now we can get to our, our old sauerkraut. <laughs> but you could do this without a spoon, as I said. You just need something to get in there and pry this out. And uh, that can be easily done with anything you might find. So there you go, that's how to open a can. That's a second little hack. It goes along with the first one with just using the spoon. The next hobo hack I want to show you has to do with duct tape. Now we know how incredibly useful duct tape can be, but sometimes carrying a whole roll can be difficult and you don't always have it with you when you need it. So I learned this from an old military friend of mine who told me how some guys do it when they're out on patrol, how to have extra duct tape that doesn't take up any room or space. If you've got your rain gear, and I like to carry a poncho along with some rain pants. These are just the military Gore-Tex pants. What you do is you turn them inside out. And inside the legs, you put a strip of duct tape. That's about three feet there on that side and three feet on the other side. And I did that to both legs. So right there, in my rain pants, doesn't take up any kind of room at all, but I've got 12 extra feet of duct tape. It can be used for repairs, for fire starting or whatever. You can also put the duct tape inside of the sleeves of a jacket or along the back of the back panel, even along the front, depending on where the pockets are. Now, it won't stick so well to fabric, but if it's a rain jacket or rain pants, Gore-Tex or some other type material, that's gonna work really well for you. It'll give you extra 15, 20, even 30 feet of duct tape that takes up no room and you always have it with you. Another thing that you can use if you can find it is this device here. This is the handy handle. They used to make these years ago. You can sometimes find them on eBay or in the secondary market or yard sales and flea markets. But what this is designed for, it's got this little hook at the top and it's designed to go over the edge of a can and then it's got this hook on the bottom and you stretch it out a little bit and it fastens on and turns any can into a very handy cup. So that's pretty cool. And this is designed for a standard can. It doesn't fit all of them. However, if you don't have a handy handle, but you have a carabiner, then this will work as well. Now, it works best on cans that have a pop top, which leaves a little bit of a lip here. And you gotta be careful because that's sharp. But what you do is you take your carabiner and you simply snap it over top like that and it grips on and that makes a pretty sturdy little handle for holding things and drinking and uh, you could even use this to suspend a can up over a fire for cooking or warming up water but that's a pretty neat little hack and I also got that from Hobo Road. Now for this next hack we're going to be making some soup but we don't have a lot of ingredients again sometimes a hobo had to make do with what they had but what we can get is we can get packs of crackers as well as packs of ketchup. And this makes a pretty tasty stew. It's kind of filling. It's not, of course, the most nutritious, but it's something that often people will give you. They'll give you as many crackers as you ask for, and they'll give you as many ketchup packets as you ask for. And if you're wise and you collect them, I'm not talking about walking in and stealing them or anything like that. I'm talking about you get a, a cup of coffee or you buy something at the store and uh, you're there maybe to use the restroom, maybe the Wi-Fi, and uh, you get a little snack and just ask for these. They'll often give you however many you want. What we're essentially making is a tomato soup. And it's as easy as opening up the packets and just squeezing in there however many you'd like. 
I put about 10 packs of ketchup in there. Now we're just going to add our crackers and you may want to go ahead and break them up ahead of time. Put them in. All right, we've got that done. And this is simply a large Denty Moore can from Denty Moore Beef Stew. So I've got about 10 packs of crackers and 19 packs of ketchup and I put the rest of it on the top. Now you kind of want to have like a two to one ratio. So forever how many packs of crackers, you need twice that many packs of ketchup. And then you just stir it up. And the reason we want to put the liquid in first is when we put this on the fire, we want to make sure that it doesn't burn to the bottom. So that's very important. Now, many of you know that these cans do have a plastic coating liner, and I would always recommend burning out the inside first by just placing it in a fire before you go ahead and cook on it so you don't get any of those plastics in your system. Next, we just need to add some water, not too much, but we wanna make sure that as those crackers absorb all of this wonderful liquid in here, that our soup does it become too thick? And you can kind of gauge, you know how it will render down. <clears throat> but there we go. Stir that up real good. And then we just put this on the fire and warm it up. And we have a great soup. Of course, you could eat this cold if you wanted to. And uh, that's perfectly acceptable. But this right here works great. And that's a very inexpensive way to have a hobo soup that doesn't really cost you a lot of money. Now for this next hobo hack, you're going to need something to dig with, a shovel or something that you can make a round hole or even a, a stick that you make a chisel point on the end and dig it around. Keep all your extra dirt and also if you can, dig the divot out so you can put it back in. It minimizes the impact on the environment. Also someone trying to find out where you've been staying. But get one of these heavy duty shopping bags and some of them are much tougher than others. And you'll want to of course be careful and gauge the size of your hole by the kind of bag that you have. And then you can weight the outside of it down with either dirt or sticks. I would, I would recommend sticks or rocks or something like that to keep this from folding in. Once you get that firmly in place, go ahead and put some water in it. However much you think you need. And you can use this then as a sink to wash your dishes and bowls out. Rinse things, and just like that, you've made a hobo sink. When you're done, make sure and remove your bag, your dirty water, and just dump that out, throw it away. Make sure and scoop as much of the dirt back in the hole as you can get. Try to clean up the ground, and then, the piece that you pulled out as close as possible. Go ahead and put it back in, stomp it around firmly. And just like that, very few people would know that you were even here. Another thing that a hobo might find useful is a large nail. Now this was sent to me by one of my viewers. And thanks Chris, I really do like this. But this was made by a blacksmith. Now, you could use a large nail. I do carry a 16-penny nail in my wallet for working on projects. This is much bigger, and of course it is made from iron. But this has a lot of uses. First of all, it can be used as a punch. So if you're working on primitive materials and you need to poke through a heavy bit of material, like leather, this would be great for that. It's also useful as what's called a FID, F-I-D. A FID is something that is used to help tease apart knots. You can get it inside and work it in. Sometimes your fingers can't get a grip, but you can get the tip of a nail, get it in there, and you can sort of fiddle it apart then and tease apart a knot. So it makes a great FID. You can also use this as an emergency tent stake. Of course, it would help to have more than one, but if you're missing one or you break one, you can put this into the ground and that will hold in a tarp or a tent. It's also useful as a fire poke. If you need to get in there and stir around the coals or pull some out for cooking, it makes a pretty handy device for that. You could also hammer it into a tree and hang your gear on it. If you have chunks of meat or potatoes in your soup and you don't have an eating utensil, you can use this as a type of a fork, although it's just got one tine, but you can poke it in. You can use this as an eating tool. 
You can use it to stir your coffee and just about anything that your imagination could turn itself to. So this is a very useful item and a great hobo hack. Of course, everyone knows that hobos rode trains. Of course they did. But they also did a lot of walking. Now, when you walk a lot, your feet get hot, they start to sweat, and you can get blisters. And so there's a very important hack that I want to show you. First of all, you remove the sock, and you'll know that your feet are a little bit damp. Get you a little tiny bottle of baby powder and just lightly coat the feet. Then you just put your sock back on. Yeah, it's going to be a little powdery, but that's all right. It's better that than blisters and very sore feet. And now the shoe. All right, there we go. Now we're ready to go for a few more miles. And this has an added benefit. Not only does it help keep your feet dry and keep blisters and all of that from forming, but it also has a pleasant smell. And everybody knows that that's a good thing inside your socks and shoes, especially when you're not able to bathe as often as you would like when you're out on the road. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below just under the more button. While you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.